coming up here in Hertfordshire, we've got a very special event taking place at Lockers Park School. Two international rugby players, Kenny Logan and Andy Gomesall, are going to be there talking about neurodiversity and the benefit of sport for all. And we actually welcome Kenny onto our show right now. Great to see you and hear you today. Thanks for having me on, Johnny. Yeah, lovely to see you. And we've got to start off, we've got to talk about this event that's taking place at Lockers Park. And I just want to find out, first of all, about neurodiversity. Um, what is it and what's your experience with it? I suppose my experience, well, what it is, is somebody who struggles, ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, autistic. Um, I struggled at school with dyslexia, being dyslexic. Didn't know I was dyslexic until I was about 16 and by that time, I was told many times by teachers, you were stupid and thick. So I sort of, my skin was pretty thick by then, and I was just dying to get away from school. And I was a farmer's son, so I was looking forward to getting on the farm and just getting away from education. It wasn't a great place for me. So, And that's what we're going to be talking about at the school, looking forward to it. And hopefully, my, my biggest takeaway from, from being an older man now and being younger, I wasn't brave enough to tell uh, the teachers, how I felt, or my mum and dad, or other people, so I held it within myself, which was quite hard and, and sometimes quite scary. All right. And do you feel like um, at the school, when you go to Lockers Park, the kids, they really sort of appreciate that, that sort of different outlook of actually having that conversation? Yeah, I think some children relate to you. Some won't. Some won't understand because they're, they're not dyslexic and they find it easy to read and write. Um, and they might find it hard to kick a football with a kid who's dyslexic can kick a football, can run fast and can um, play rugby. So it's, it's a bit different. Everybody's different. I think one thing for me, education, and certainly, you know, see my own children going through it. It's, just, it's the same system has been there for hundreds of years, thousands of, well, not thousands of years, but hundreds of years. And everybody's different, more so now than ever. Technology's there. I mean, there's no technology when I was growing up. So the technology there to help children now is, is there. And it's not a stigma to be dyslexic or be dyspraxic or be different. And when I was at school, it was a massive stigma. But so I think some people, some children still find it hard to talk about it. And if I can help one child to talk about it to his mum, his school, and his school to understand, I think the big thing for me is schools need to understand how these kids feel. Cause it's not a nice place to be. And it's easy for you saying, yeah, I know, I know what's wrong with them, but you need to understand how they learn and they learn differently. Yeah. So how important then for you at school was sport? Well, sport was my lifeline, to be honest. Um, if it wasn't for sport, I don't know what would have turned up. I might have been locked up somewhere. Um, sport gave me that freedom and that ability to express myself, that ability to show people that I was something, not just a person that struggled all the time. And it gave you that bit of credibility. So for me, that, that was my main source of feeling good about myself. And, and the big thing for me is you've got a child at school and he's... he's you know, you give your children six years old or five years old to a school and you get them back at 18. Now, if they, they come back at 18 with no self-esteem, you, you've not done your job. Self-esteem is the easiest thing to keep a child going, and that's by being positive, helping them, making them feel good about themselves. So I'm a big believer in having self-esteem. And if you can leave school with self-esteem, you can, you can achieve anything in life. Right. And when you come to Lockers Park, it's not just you. You're going to be with Andy Gomez as well. Now, you and Gomez together, um, what's that going to be like? A bit of England-Scotland rivalry. Is there a bit of banter that goes on there? Yeah, it will be quite good now because we, we haven't, they haven't lost. <laughs> they haven't beaten Scotland for about four years. Yeah. So I think the rumour now is we get to keep the trophy because we've had it for so long. <laughs> and because it, it just doesn't move off the shelf anymore. <laughs> um, no, listen, well, I've been on the other end when England went all the four or five in a year and a bounce, so I get what it's going to be like. But good crack. Gomez is a good mate of mine, played at Wasps. We won the Premiership together, um, and he used to actually share a room when I first moved to London. Right. He lived in my um, flat. So uh, we've, we've known each other a long time, and, <laughs> and he's won a World Cup, so and I haven't. So. <laughs> when I saw on the TV last weekend, you were beaming. There was a shot of you that went to the crowd, and you were absolutely beaming. As you say, it went to four Calcutta Cups in a row. What do you reckon? Do you reckon with two more games still to go in the Six Nations, you've got Italy, and I know that's not going to be a walkover, um, and then you've got the challenge of the Irish. Could, could yeah. Scotland nick in there at the end? Um, I think it'd be great if we could or, or get close to being um, second in the league. If we were second in the championship, we're our best finished for a long time. Can we be on? Of course we can. Uh, everybody can beat a team in a day. We have to be on our day. We've not really, we've played 
three games now. We should have been, we should have been France, obviously, mm -hmm. the try that was never allowed. Yeah. Um, I suppose from my point of view, Italy is the next game up. Italy drew with that. Um, Italy, Italy are good. They're looking good. Yeah. And I think Italy, you know, if you look in the last three or four years, the under 20s have done really well. So got a lot of young players coming through. Um, so Italy will be a hard game, but I think we should beat Italy. And then Ireland. Listen, I think Ireland are, are the number two in the world or number three in the world. They're, they're doing well. They're very strong. They're very um, consistent. And it'll be a hard game to win. But if we're there and we've got all the wins in the bank, we've got a chance. Indeed, indeed. Going back to the event at Lockers Park, um, it's all in support of uh, My Name's Doddy, the foundation, of course, from your, yeah. about your dear friend. Tell us, how, how, you got, how did you get involved with the charity and the organisation? Um, so when Doddy was diagnosed with motor neuro disease, which is, if people don't understand what it is, it's one of the worst diseases um, can ever be diagnosed to anybody, it just basically wastes your body weight and it could be six months, a year and a half. Sometimes you live longer. Doddy lived six years. So my name's Doddy Foundation was created from Doddy um, back in 2017 and they've raised millions and millions of pounds to awareness for MND. Uh, he's a mate of mine and I think when you've, I think one thing about rugby, Gomers has done the same. The rugby community, the sporting community have come behind his story because it's not about him. He had M and D. He was doing this for other people, and that was the the legacy he was leaving behind. He was trying to find a cure for the next person who's going to get M and D, and that's the strength and the courage of the man. And that's where I think everybody looks at him because the respect for him, what he's what he's done as a foundation. Sadly, passed away um, last you know, almost two years well, last November, and then before that, and. You know, the, the foundation has got stronger and stronger and the amount of people that have come out to do more and more for the foundation is quite incredible, all down to his amb ambition and bravery. Indeed. And uh, this is the tickets are on sale. People can go to the Lockers Park School website and get their tickets for this evening. Um, talking about health-wise, we should just mention yourself. You're looking in good form and good health here on the screen. But last year, of course, you had that diagnosis of prostate cancer. H how are you doing now with everything? Um, touch wood, I'm all clear. So I've had my almost two year checkup, so I'm clear from it. I was very lucky that I think when you get to my age, you get to 50 years old. I was 49 at the time. You're heading into Sniper Alley. Mm -hmm. um, all the diseases are coming at you, and you've got to try and get through it. Um, for me, um, I was lucky I came across it and got tested, and then was monitored, and then I got my um, prostate taken out. So, um, I'm very lucky, and there's a lot of people who ignore symptoms. Well, funny thing is about prostate is there's no symptoms. If you get symptoms, it's too late. It's one of the diseases that you've got to go looking for. So any men out there who are 48 upwards, go and get tested. And if you're black, um, you need to go about 45 because um, you're a bit younger. So just get tested. It's a blood test, and if you get it at the right time, you'll be fine. But just do not wait for it to come and get you. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, thank you ever so much for sharing that. Listen, before I let you go, now if my wife's listening, she'd go crazy if I don't mention this because she said, you've got to mention Strictly Come Dancing <laughs> because in our house, my wife was mortified because she's a big fan of your good lady wife as well. And she, we just want to know, how did that go down in the Logan household when you ended up finishing, was it fourth or fifth? But Gabby, who's a fantastic <laughs> dancer, perhaps was a little bit lower down the, the score. Yeah, how did that she, go she down? She was out week three. I lasted to week, well, that would be the quarterfinals, just before the semifinals. I was ready to go then because it was two dances and two dances <laughs> yeah. was only enough for me. Yeah. Um, at the start, I would say it was very, um, I would I would be walking on glass, <laughs> eggshells. I was taking my time saying anything. And then now she knows that I'm the best dancer <laughs> in the house. So, you've got to live with that for the rest of her life. Indeed. Indeed. There we go. We're, we're leaving at that. Listen... Kenny, thank you ever so much for uh, spending time with us today, and I hope it goes absolutely fantastically on Thursday the 7th of March at Lockers Park School. So much to share. Uh, be a, got a lot of good laughs as well with you and Gomez. So, listen, thanks ever so much. Thank you very much for having me on.